Dear ones, I am Archangel Michael. Today I will comment on letter number 9, Sananda's letter. I hope you've read it, but for those who haven't read it, there's no problem, read later. Everything has its right time, everything has its right time. Card number 9 is the last card, but don't forget that there are additional texts attached to these cards, which are also very important. So look for them, and I will comment on them too, but next week. So in relation to letter number 9, Sananda begins by explaining something that, to this day, is still very confused by many of you. Do not confuse Christic energy with the religion Christianity. Remember the following, Sananda lived in Judea and followed, until he was enlightened, the steps taken by his family in relation to the religion of Judaism. He always felt that something there didn't match what resonated in his heart, especially that punitive God that was taught by religion. So he was always very rebellious about that. After his awakening in the desert, Sananda fully understood that everything was wrong and tried to pass this on to the people, to the great leaders. But what happens to the great rulers? Very rare is that ruler who thinks about the people, one who is interested in seeing the people improve. For the most part, governments only want to think about themselves, forgetting that there are people who depend on their decisions. So when Sananda starts preaching that there is no punishment, that there is no punishing God, that Judaism preached, the great rulers found this a very serious problem. Because it was exactly through this statement that they controlled the people, that is, every wrong thing that the people did, God punished them. So they took all the blame off their own shoulders, to throw it on the shoulders of God, a being that no one knew, no one saw, but that everyone knew of his power. Even more so was the power he had to punish, because everything that happened wrong was attributed to God's bad mood, to a divine punishment for something that humans had done, that those people had done. So Sananda's words were not well received, because it would end their power, it would end their way of controlling the people. So Sananda became a frowned upon person, a person who was disrupting everything that those rulers maintained. If the people started listening to Sananda, they would no longer be able to threaten the people, saying that all of this was divine punishment, since he preached a non-punitive God. So everything ended up culminating in Sananda's death, because the interests were much greater than listening to that human being, who called himself the Messiah, but many preferred not to believe that and maintain their own decisions, their own powers. And so Sananda was crucified. Very well. At this point, Sananda's words had been passed on to his disciples, and it is worth remembering that they were Jews and followed many aspects of their own religion, which was Judaism. So when Sananda left, the vast majority of disciples ended up changing their ideas, getting involved in everything that was said. Only Peter felt that he had a mission, which was to found a church that could worship those words that had been spoken by Sananda, by Jesus, as you knew him. Very good. And so the religion began to be called, Christianity. However, it is worth remembering that many followed Sananda, many liked what he said despite not understanding, being afraid, agreeing with what he said his words touched their hearts. So those who were touched, who lived with Sananda, began to attend this church, where the words that Sananda had left were repeated. The rulers, of course, noticed this movement, but as long as it didn't affect them, everything was fine. However, we cannot forget that you were being manipulated at this time, by some dark people. Even with the presence of Sananda on your planet, which was one of the first attempts to try to make you wake up, and free yourself from that, to get out of this yoke of atonement, the Dark Ones were already there, they already dominated the religion of Judaism. So why not also master Christianity, this new religion that would emerge? Of course, as I already said here, that Christic energy of Sananda flooded everyone's hearts, regardless of religion. Because his energy was so powerful, even though he was in a human body, his words, 
his thought forms created an egregore of light so great, that that Christic consciousness was implanted in the hearts of everyone, regardless of religion. It is as if everyone had been contaminated by a disease, another disease of good, the disease of love, the disease of evolution. So even though Sananda was crucified, and supposedly his rulers thought they had silenced his voice, his voice was not silenced. Because this Christic consciousness implanted in every human heart, reverberated and is still there today, two thousand years later. Very well, then Christianity was born, from the words of Jesus, from the stories of the disciples, who, as you know, everyone who tells a story always adds something of their own. So one would tell the other, who would tell the other, and when this was written it was practically distorted. So many, to this day, do not understand that the Bible was not written by Jesus, he wasn't the one who dictated the Bible, his sacred book of Christianity, he wasn't. It was written by his disciples and other people who lived at the time. And it is clear that there was already manipulation by the dark ones, nothing like giving a helping hand to distort everything that was said, and make you continue to believe that that God continued to be punitive, that that God punished. Otherwise where would the control be? There would be no control, you would not accept reins from anyone, because you would know that you were powerful and that everything you did would come back against you, but not as a punishment, as a consequence of your actions. Then everything starts to get distorted. Representatives of that religion took hold of those ideas and began to introduce their own, according to their understanding, according to their will, to always keep their believers in check, to keep their believers manipulated. Because that's what religions do, they totally manipulate you. Many people question themselves when a lot of things are said, but the vast majority put a blind faith in it, an absurd faith and that if it gets to the point where a religious leader says that you have to kill yourselves in the name of God, you will kill yourselves, as has already happened in several parts of your planet. So, that's where it all starts, and more and more your Bible is being modified. I am here quoting the Bible because it is being cited in letter number 9, in relation to Christianity. So let it be very clear, for everyone here, it was not Jesus who wrote the Bible, his words were put there by men, because of the understanding that men had of what he said. Of course, there are many of the parables that Sananda said, many, but they were duly incorporated into a much larger text to form the religious book you have today. So my brothers, I understand that for many of you, who were raised based on this book, whether the religion is Catholic, whether Baptist, whatever, Protestant, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what name the sub-religion was given, because the great religion is Christianity, and things happened in such a way that you managed to break this religion into many others, as each one understood the same book in different ways. Look how far you've come, to what extent men have gone to manipulation. I'm going to ask each of you a question, where does it say that the men who command these religions were chosen by God? Where is this written? Those who choose them are humans, they are men, there is no divine choice. There is no separateness for our father or mother God. For our father mother God there is no religion, religion is to love others unconditionally, this is the religion that our father or mother God preaches. Not what is said out there, with rules, with prohibitions, with a lot of things attributed to our father or mother God, what he didn't say, what he didn't do. Then the figure of sin is established, that everything you do wrong is a sin, and you will be punished. This is how they manage to keep society in line, where you have to respect God, because otherwise he will punish you, he will punish each one of you. So this was the idea put forward by men in all religions, or sub-religions, it doesn't matter, keep them always trapped in a concept of punishment. Here comes the concept of heaven and hell and many of you still believe in it. My brothers, this is still a small tip of the iceberg, because if you stop to think, analyze, stop to think if this so-called religion that uses the Bible, Sananda's words as a basis, why is it so rich? 
In whose name was this wealth made? Oh yes, in the name of our father or mother God. In the name of our father or mother God, he killed himself, because people who did not follow this religion were killed indiscriminately. So another way to impose power. Anyone who did not believe this was killed, and many were sacrificed in this way. People who had powers, over time, were burned at the stake, because those people brought the truth, they brought the strength of nature, they brought all the power that their souls had, which your souls have, so they were a danger to that society, so it was demonic, so let's burn them at the stake. And so this religion has been maintained over time, killing, judging, condemning, demanding a lot of things, supposedly passed down by our father or mother God and Sananda. This is the most fragile part, it is the cutest part of the story, because there is still an uglier part, which I am not going to tell here. You will find out, because this is part of the truths that will appear. And I'm not just going to talk about this religion or these sub-religions of Christianity, I'm going to talk about the others too, which also kill in the name of a god. They supposedly offer guarantees of a paradise, to those who commit murders, who commit attacks, who commit the death of many people, they will have a guaranteed place in paradise. Is there anything more absurd than that? Then our father or mother God will be rejoicing, because there was an indiscriminate slaughter against those who did not believe in him, and everyone will be welcomed with open arms, including by him, into his heavenly room. My brothers, I can tell you that this causes, I won't say that I feel sick, because I don't have a physical body, but this causes a horrible feeling in each of us beings of light, when we see a brother killing himself, killing others, believing in a paradise full of virgins. This is painful for us, in our form, even consciously, we feel it. Why has a religion been lost to this point? It's like a replica of the Crusades. If you analyze it, it's the same thing. All those who were contrary to what was preached, by a certain very important being who placed himself up there, were killed. Exactly the same, only the reasons are different, the promises are different. Because on this side of the West the promises were riches, because there was looting, killing those simple beings who didn't believe in that, but who had a little gold, who had a little wealth, was quite interesting. To make the church richer and richer, and on the same side in the East the same thing. These religions, their rulers are always very rich. How interesting. That's very interesting. And you continue with your eyes closed, you accept all this with your eyes closed. You let yourself be carried away with such fervor that you stop thinking, you leave reason aside. So there's your world. Many think that everything that is happening now is punishment, for all that you have done. Then it becomes necessary to repeat that phrase, everything you sow, you reap. So think a little. Many who are here listening to me now no longer believe this, they realized these untruths a long time ago. They never let themselves be carried away by the arguments used by these sub-religions. But there is still a majority here, who still don't really believe in what is said here, who even read the letters of Christ, but does not accept them. Because this is so ingrained, so embedded in her mind, that she cannot imagine that she has been deceived for so long, who was always involved in living in a way that wasn't the best. So my brothers, the separation of the great religions is not a divine thing, it never was. This was all very well manipulated by those who wanted power, who were consequently the manipulators of humanity, and here they are manipulating you to this day. A lot will still appear. I tell you, this will be documented here, that all these leaders know exactly that we are acting, they know they will lose power at any minute, they know the truth will be revealed. Now it's worth commenting on an important point here, yes, there were great leaders who decided all of this. So we are not going to be judges here to condemn those who let themselves be carried away. In the same way, before you woke up, you believed in all of this, many did not believe, because they were already evolved souls, 
but the vast majority believed in what was said. So we can't simply condemn everyone there for what they're doing. They follow what they believe in. I'm not going to tell you that each and every representative who stands in front of an audience preaching is a representative of evil, I'm not going to say that, because this is not true. He is there preaching what he believes, what was passed on to him and which he does not have the strength to contest. Who is he to dispute that? He is very involved with that there, so he preaches what he believes. Why? Because someday someone wrote that, someone defined that, so that someone who defined it all, that is the person who represents the manipulators. He was the one who established the rules, who established the game, and then everyone who comes down is just following orders, following what is written, without contesting. After all, God is punitive, if you object, God will punish each one of them, so they follow what is there with their eyes closed. So let's also not go around judging and condemning everyone here for what they are doing. Many don't know what they are doing. Many firmly believe that what is written there is the truth, period, without criticism and without dispute. I already said this here. Whoever resonates with all of this is because they are an evolved soul, that it is you who are resonating with this entire process. That's why you never let yourself be carried away by what you heard, because deep down in your soul you know that it's all a lie, that it's a big manipulation. However, some people, as I said, are on the fence. They listen to what is said about evolution, but they are trapped by the dogmas of their religions. And then they don't know which way to go, which side of the wall to jump. If you jump to the side of your religion, or if you risk getting to know the other side, this so-called side, the truth. And that's how the wall is getting more and more people. Every day more people climb the wall, and they wait like this, a sign so they can decide which way they are going to fall, which way they are going to jump. So my brothers, you often have to make a decision, Either you believe that all of this was a great manipulation, with the aim of enrichment, always, never effectively thinking about the people. The vast majority only think about getting rich. And then I'm going to make a small aside, there are those who actually follow the religion, trust everything that is said there, but who, for a reason that it is impossible to explain what it is, follow in Sananda's footsteps. In humility, in love for others, in helping others, in that helping hand, is that representative who gets involved with the people's problems, respects the dogmas of religion, but does not think about himself, he thinks about others, he thinks he is there to serve, not to be served. So there are, there are representatives, who have a pure heart, who represent and understand exactly what Sananda was, a humble being at heart, who reached out to the rich and the poor in the same way indiscriminately. So he acts in the same way, thinking about his community, thinking about what he can do for his community. This one does follow Sananda's teachings, but not the enrichment teachings, which many are guided to do. And you can see that they are small humble places, where they receive their faithful, they are simple churches, very little comfort, but it doesn't matter, there is love there, there is human warmth. Then you go to huge cathedrals, completely refrigerated, completely comfortable for the faithful, everything is beautiful and wonderful, and a lot of people are starving all around. Did Sananda preach this? That places of worship, places of prayer, should be completely rich, extremely rich? Then many will say, no, but the churches were built, the people who put gold in the churches. Exactly. They put gold in the church to make them more beautiful so that God could see with better eyes, it was a bribe to our father or mother God. I'm going to build a beautiful church, all full of gold so that God helps me. Yes, everyone interpreted it in their own way, right? So my brothers, moral of the story, what matters is Sananda's message, or Buddha's message, or the message of any other being of light that was on earth, was always one love for others, love your neighbor as yourself, don't do to others what you don't want them to do to you. 
So if each of you internalized these words or better if each of you had internalized these words, your world today would be different. Because you would have expelled all this evil that runs through your world a long time ago. But you remained blind, and there is your world. Remember that I said some time ago that here has become a planet of atonement, it became a planet where people had to really resonate with the third dimension, resonate with all those feelings that you resonate with today. But too much time has passed. You would have had to rebel, you would have had to stand up against all of this, but power, wealth, control, has always been the mainspring of your planet. So that some could become extremely rich, without caring how poor their people remain, and this is still the case today. In the vast majority of cities you have pockets of wealth, and many more pockets of poverty, because their rulers are only concerned with increasing their wealth, they are not very concerned about the people. Once again I'm going to do a separate one. There are indeed rulers who think about the people. There are those who know they are there, with the power to improve or harm life in that city, that village, that country. It doesn't matter. They have the power in their hands and they do the best they can, and the people help. Why? Because everyone is united in the same thought, everyone is happy there. So things only prosper, things only rise, because there is an emanation of love for the one who is commanding those people at that moment. So those people receive that love, receive that care, and return it with more love and more care, and that city only prospers. They are small oases within a capitalist world, where only money is important. People have lost importance. Government officials don't care if there is a hungry child at the other end. He wants to fill his own pockets, he takes the money that was supposed to help that family, and puts it in his own pocket, without any scruples, because he thinks he's there. I have to take advantage of the time I'm here, to fill my pockets, then I'll live in peace. Go somewhere else, not here on earth anymore, go live somewhere else. It's my brothers, the consequences will come. You still can't see anything, you only see that things only get worse, you only see that the suffering only increases. You can't see the side of the truth, where everything that has always been hidden under the rug is being thrown in everyone's face, including you. So, my brothers, continue to think that all this is punishment, keep thinking the world is ending. No, the world is changing. The dirt is coming to the surface, there are no more carpets, the carpets were all removed, and the dirt came out. So each of you stop and think about everything you have contributed to what is out there in this world. Many of you have been following a new path for a short time, some time ago. You haven't been following this path since you were little that you are here now. You guys did a lot of nonsense. So go back in time and remember what you did before you woke up, before you woke up, you did a lot of things wrong. So don't think you're superior to everyone else either. Don't let this ego grow, ah, uh, I am now an awakened being, so I am the boss. Negative, you are awake but you are still reaping everything you sowed back there, your harvest will come. It is not because you have awakened, that you are following this path with me here, that you will not reap any more of what you did wrong. No mistake, you will still reap. Firstly because you have to get rid of this harvest. You are not going to push this dirt under the rug, you have to live with the dirt you put in, and what comes next. Now how are you going to receive this harvest, that's what I want to see, this is where you will end the lessons or not. Or they will continue passing them, only to reap even worse things up ahead, because every time the lesson comes, it comes stronger, until you learn it. So my brothers, no one is free from anything, because you are on the path of evolution, do you think you are better and won't go through anything else? You are quite mistaken. You continue to receive everything that you also did, you are also CO participants in everything that is happening there. Have you always been conscious of not throwing rubbish on the ground? Have you always been aware of recycling? 
Have you always been aware of loving Gaia? If any of you say yes, I will clap. There really are some of you who have always had this awareness, I won't deny it, but there are very few of them. The vast majority do not. The vast majority have harmed Gaia all along. Then over time you started to modify your actions and attitudes, of course there is always a time to start, the important thing is to start. Perfect, but you will still harvest my brothers. The fact that you today have another concept, have another way of walking, does not exempt you from the mistakes you made back then, they are there and you will harvest them very soon, if you haven't already. Because with the acceleration of the energies that are arriving, the lessons are coming much faster and being thrown in your face. So now you have to know how to deal with them, so that you really remain on this path of evolution, letting go of all the dogmas, of all the rules imposed by those who never thought about you, only thought about them. So my brothers, think, think hard about what you have already done. It's not you starting a new journey now, when everything has been forgotten. No, it was not. It's as if everything were weighed in balance. Do whatever you can to correct the mistakes of the past, do it with love, do it with desire, and then you will be able to move that scale, where the positive will end up eliminating, being stronger than the negative. And this is where you continue on the path of evolution, it is in this way. But definitely letting go of all these dogmas, or else this journey will be very difficult indeed. For those who are on the fence, I advise you to review everything you believe, but don't think with your heart. Put in your minds that there is no punishment, that if you choose the side of truth, you will not be punished for your religions, because that does not exist. Now if you are still afraid of being punished, then I suggest you get off the wall and go back there, because you really won't be able to free yourself from all these dogmas that have been placed in your mind. You're not yet ready to break free from all this, to discover that you've been deceived all this time. And that a lot of things you believed in were wrong, had been written by men, not by our father or mother God, not by Sananda, not by Buddha, not by Muhammad, everything was distorted. If you are ready to review everything you know and believe, great. Jump to this side, to the side of truth, and let yourself know the truth allow yourself to know the truth, then yes, you will be sure that you made the right decision. Because the truth always brings the better way, the truth always brings the light, and the light always brings the truth. So think about it. You won't be able to sit on the wall your whole life. This wall will collapse, it will fall, there will be no more wall. And then which side will you fall? Whoever doesn't make the choice will be taken off the planet. Now whoever chooses to start this journey of evolution, will at least be preparing themselves to earn that ticket on the train, and stay here. So think about it. Then many may think like this, Hey, my Archangel, are you threatening us, that if we don't go to the side of truth, we will leave the planet? I'm not threatening anyone, I'm telling the truth. And at this point in events, I can no longer speak sweet words, stay here and focus on what I'm saying. I am being very clear, either you follow the path of truth, no, I'm not telling you to follow me here on this channel, you follow whatever you want, as long as you open yourself to the truths, and prepare to evolve, because if you don't even make this attempt, really, you won't stay on the planet, you will go to the tram, off the planet because you will continue resonating the third dimension. Now if you want to take a risk, you want to put yourself at least on the path to evolution, this is the time, do it, because at least you will try. Whether you will succeed, I don't know, will depend on the quantum of energy you will have at the time of the planet's ascension. But at least you will be trying, you will be on the path and you will certainly be helping your soul, because you made a decision. Now if you don't want to make any decision, you want to stay where you are, fine, you'll stay where you are, but just not here, somewhere else. So this is not a threat, this is a truth, this is an observation. 
There is no more time for us to talk sweet nothings, fooling you, this is the purest truth. You have to make a decision. On top of the wall, you can't stay any longer, because that wall will fall, and whoever falls with it will leave. It won't fall to this side, it will fall to the other side, the side of the third dimension. And it won't stay on the planet. Truer than this I cannot be, I can't tell lies either. So this is not a threat, this is an observation. You have to take a stand. Things are happening quickly. Fortunately, those who are awake are accelerating the process, and everything can happen tomorrow. So don't wait too long to make a decision, because every day you waste is one less day you have to evolve. So make a decision, yesterday, the day before yesterday, that is, now, this minute, today, so that you still have time to enter the path of evolution, so that you still have time to prepare. Think about it I am Archangel Michael. I'm here, always, trying to show you the truth. Now, believe whoever you want.